Call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer for our servicemen and women throughout the world and also for all of those who have passed away in our community. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Gahan? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. I make a motion to accept an additional exhibit identified as the escrow agreement for item 6C, the Second Amendment to Concession and Lease Agreement, and incorporate it into the backup of that legislation. Second. On the question, the city solicitor notified us that the escrow agreement was inadvertently omit it when the legislation was submitted and requested that we include it at this time. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A Tax Assessor's Results Report for hearing date held June 6, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B Agenda for the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting held June 13, 2018. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have announcements to make? Uh, I have one announcement. Uh, it'll be time in July for the annual Manuka Lions Golf Tournament. Uh, this is one of their main fundraising events that they have. It helps generate their money, which uh, it, it funds a lot of local projects for the children, including holiday parties, Easter party, Christmas parties, uh, Halloween parades with costumes, and they do a lot of great things for the community. And this is one area where they generate some of that money that they use. Uh, the, the event this year is going to be at Penn Hills Country Club, and it is $90 a golfer, $360 per team, and the date is going to be July 21st, and it'll start at 1.30. And uh, I'll make an announcement on this as the date gets closer as well. Thank you. Uh, yes, I have one. Um, final announcement for the benefit for Gage Lasky uh, at the Kaiser Valley Community Center. This Friday, June 22nd, from 2 to 10 p.m., admission is $10. Gage is a 12-year-old Northeast Intermediate School student uh, who needs muscle eye surgery at Will's Eye Institute. He was also diagnosed with autism and seizure disorder and recently with congenital brain abnormality with an inoperable aneurysm in his brain. The proceeds from this benefit will help cover the deductible uh, that is not covered by medical insurance and travel expenses uh, for his eye surgery in Philadelphia to repair damage caused by a seizure. For tickets or to make a donation of a gift basket, gift card, food, or monetary contribution, please contact Joyce Spies at 570-955-0253 or Amber Lasky at 570-497-9532. Also, uh, June 21st at Rita's Italian Ice, 1019 South Washington Avenue. Please come out and help support Scranton's Central uh, City Little League. Between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., 20% of the total sales will be donated uh, to the Scran Scranton Central City Little League. Thank you. A number of announcements. Uh, first, this Thursday, June 21st, is Dump the Pump Day. The public may ride Colts buses for free on all routes on this day. This is an annual event intended to promote the use of public transportation. Pool season has officially begun with the opening of Neog Pool. Pool fees start at $5 for a single pass and $75 for a family season pass. The Neog Pool will operate seven days a week from noon to 6 p.m. New this year, children 12 and younger must be accompanied by an adult. The city's other pools, Weston Park and Weston Field and Connell Park do not have opening dates yet due to staffing issues. All of the lifeguards have not yet been hired. The city is still taking applications which are available in the Weston Field House on Providence Road and at City Hall on the third floor HR department. So if you know anyone that wants to be a lifeguard for the city, uh, we are hiring. Mary Mother of God Parish in North Scranton is holding their annual block party this week, June 21st through the 23rd. It's held on the corner of West Market Street and Wayne Ave by Cole Muffler. Hours are 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday. The block party features homemade food and live entertainment 
including a salute to our area veterans, which will be held on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. The picnic will be held rain or shine. And finally, during the month of July, council will be meeting at 12.30 um, in the daytime to accommodate the schedules of other individuals that may not be able to make it to meetings um, in the evening. So that will run from July 2nd to July 30th. Uh, following August, we'll go back to our regular, regularly scheduled evening meetings. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Joan Hodawanitz. Joan Hodawanitz, city resident taxpayer. Well, today's June 18th, which means our independent audit is now 18 days late. Um, does anyone know, is SBN Company in the building working on it? Well, the work has been ongoing, so I'm sure that they have it okay. in the building for sure. I hope. It would be nice if we could get one done before the August recess, but we'll see. And another thing, um, there's part in the audit every year. It's called MDNA. It's the Management Discussion and Analysis section. And among other things that is supposed to be covered in there is the city's assessment of all pending lawsuits. Now that's through the end of 2017. Any that got initiated this year would not be covered. But what it's supposed to do is identify all the pending lawsuits and then it's supposed to assess the financial impact on the city should the city lose the lawsuit. For example, the lawsuit inv uh, involving the sewer authority sale, rental registration, the garbage fee. So I'm looking forward to seeing how all that is written up. Um, which brings to mind, do we have a date from when we're gonna relook our status and our progress on the recovery plan? There is no uh, set date yet, but I know that it's gonna take place uh, sometime in July. Um, okay, so it'll be before the recess. Yes. So it'd be nice to have the audit done to include that in there, you know, um, because you could have some major problems should any of those lawsuits go, go against the city. Also, 43 days until the August recess, do we have any update on when we're gonna get the results from the Arcadis stormwater study? I know the digitization is in progress, so I think once that's completed, we're, we're getting very, very close to that. Would it possibly be before the recess? I'm, I'm very hopeful that it'll be before the yeah, recess. Because yeah, because among other things, um, that'd be something be interesting if they included that in the uh, audit. Um, and it's obviously, it should impact the 2019 budget and all other budgets going forward. I would like to see, you know, some quantification of the costs that the taxpayers are gonna be facing. Uh, and um, hopefully we can, that can be worked in some way into the upcoming budget process. Um, the only other thing I'd like to talk about tonight and you may not think this is not relevant, but it is. Yesterday, uh, the Times published its annual um, analysis of the 37 school districts in northeastern Pennsylvania and how they fared on 17 statewide subject areas or, and, or issues and the SATs. And once again, the Scranton School District got a big fat zero across the board, did not meet any of the statewide averages in 17 standardized tests or the SAT. And they did that last year and I think the year before. God knows how many years that's been going on. Now, we all know the budgetary problems that the school district has and the pall that it casts over the administration of the school district. But this is the other side of the coin. This is performance. It's one thing to say I got money problems, but then you have to look at how the district is performing uh, with the students. Now, I hear many excuses year after year for why this is so. Um, we have a lot of very poor students. In fact, it's 82.5%, the highest in, um, 
northeastern Pennsylvania. That's a very high percentage. 82.5% of students come from poverty. Uh, lack of parent involvement. A lot of these children don't get you know, parents who are interested in their education, or they may be in a one-parent family or whatever. Uh, and of course, the years of fiscal mismanagement and the lack of accountability on, on the part of the administration. So be that as it may. Uh, and I'm also aware that the Scranton School District is a separate taxing authority, as is the county. But you gotta remember, Scranton is the largest municipality in the county and the school district is a quality of life issue for most of us. And just keep in mind that I don't think many employers are gonna to wanna to come here if that's the kind of school district they have to send their kids to. Nor do I think job seekers are gonna to wanna to move here if that's where they're gonna to have to send their kids. So when we do the recovery reevaluation, I think you need to talk about the impact of the school district on quality of life and job growth in this city. Thank you. Thank you. Wes Spindler. Good evening, Council. Wes Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Two weeks ago when I was here, I talked about my recycle container getting thrown in the recycle truck. And Council Rogan, you told me to leave my number. I forgot. But, uh, I looked you up. I called. <laughs> called Council Chambers the next morning, spoke to this nice young lady, and uh, I was just on my way to Pittsburgh to visit my daughter, and also go see my favorite baseball team, who I think you could tell. Uh, she took my number and uh, address, and I left Tuesday, when I came home Thursday, it was there. So I want to thank everybody for the quick action. I appreciate it. And they also gave me a red one, which I didn't need, so. Moving on, speaking of Pittsburgh, when I got there, my daughter said I couldn't park on one side of the street. Reason being, the first Wednesday and Thursday of every month, except the winter months, they clean the streets of Pittsburgh. We're lucky we can get it done once a year. They do it once a month. They, you can park one side on Wednesday and you have to park on the other side on Thursday. Once a month except the winter. And like I said, we have trouble getting it done once a year. I think that's terrible. Big city like that, our city has, a, what, half the size of Pittsburgh? I don't know. We should have a better place. And they have permanent signs. They don't just put signs up on trees or whatever. They have permanent signs on each block stating what side of the street they're, paved, they're uh, cleaning on Wednesday and what side they're cleaning on Thursday. So I think we should look into that. Because as I said, in Trip Park, they were three weeks late this year. Nobody knew when they were coming. So nobody moved your cars. So it was a, I'll be nice, but it was, a, it was a terrible job. I could have said something else, but we should look into that. Uh, next thing. I guess everybody's aware we have new fireworks law in Pennsylvania. But uh, I know in Scranton, those fireworks aren't legal unless the laws change. So I, are they legal in Scranton or not? Or does anybody the, know? The, the city law is more restrictive than the state law, which may or may not be legal now. We, we could check with our solicitor. Previously, it was in line with the state law. Um, but the state did change their ordinance. Generally, a local ordinance cannot supersede a state ordinance. Um, I do know in the past years, just because of the volume of calls the police department received, that it was impossible to enforce on the 4th of oh, July. Oh, I know. I've been trip park just around my house. It's Crazy, right? It's like a, a big display. Uh, like, luckily, I don't have young kids, so I really don't care. But. So we can check to see if our ordinance is still enforceable. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have Attorney Menorah look into that over over the next week. Now that, that was never changed. So. Right? No, it, our, our ordinance was not changed. Yeah. Uh, okay. A few weeks ago in the paper. A few weeks ago in the paper was an article about. Parents complaining about sheets again are going to cause the traffic jams. You know, the ones causing the traffic jams are the parents picking up their kids. When I went to school, I walked back and forth to school over a mile. If the people would let their kids walk, their kids are so lazy today, they, they can't walk. It's ridiculous. 
They're the ones causing the traffic jams. It won't be the people going to Sheets. If they just let their kids walk home, there wouldn't be a problem. And I go through there when they're getting out. It won't be Sheets. It's those parents causing the traffic jams, the ones complaining. Uh, lastly, somebody asked tonight, I was just wondering, uh, are the council meetings available to be seen online? Does anybody know? They are. They're on uh, Electric City Television's YouTube channel actually has. Is it live? No. Is it live on YouTube? I'm, I, I wasn't aware that it was live on YouTube. I knew you could go back and watch them. Um, but that's something somebody from the audience did say they are. Um, but I know they're still broadcast on Comcast Live, and then you could go back and watch on YouTube at any time as well. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Bob Bolas. Evening Council, Bob Bolas, Scranton. On Flag Day, it was an honor to be the guest speaker at the Gino Murley Center to honor and stand before real Americans that are forgotten that sit in the hospitals, that came back from war, and just see what they went through and hear their stories. And it was very emotional for me to stand there. I've spoken to veterans groups all over the country. And to be here at home and speaking with our own veterans was a wake up call. And more people should do this and really understand what went on. It's unfortunate it couldn't be publicized as it should have been, but I'm going to stand here and tell them I honored every, each and every one of them for their service to this country. More people should respect that. Mr. Gohan, I hate to keep bringing this up, but last week I uh, got a little heated here about a question that you said has been answered. A mulligan to join the SOAR Authority from the Council to uh, support the SOAR Authority against getting our money back. You said that it has been answered. I don't recall whether you said, yes, you will support a motion, or no, you won't. You know what, Mr. Bolas, let me try, let me try to explain this to you, because no, I, no, well, I can give you an answer. Now listen. Yeah. The Sewer Authority is a separate governmental entity from the City of Scranton. I'm sure you know that because you know government, correct? That's correct. Okay. We made a motion that I voted for months ago to ask the Sewer Authority to look into Mr. Mulligan's situation. Five people voted yes. The Sewer Authority sent a letter to the Attorney General. The Attorney General punted it back to the Sewer Authority and the Sewer Authority asked Mr. Mulligan to voluntarily give the money back. So what you want me or this council to do, I don't know and I don't understand, well, but there is currently no lawsuit going on. If the Sewer Authority wants to engage in a lawsuit with Mr. Mulligan, they can do that. But again, they're a separate governmental entity. And while they're at it, if they're going to do that, then I would suggest that they look at every solicitor that's ever served in the Scranton Sewer Authority. So I'm, that is my I'm, answer I'm for with the you final time. I'm with you 100% on that. I'm simply asking, since it changed from when we first brought it up to where it is now, to force basically send a letter to force the sewer authority into the litigation instead of pushing the peas around the plot. You, you can't, we can't force the sewer authority to do anything. If you remember, I tried unsuccessfully to get the Scranton Sewer Authority to invite the Auditor General and to audit the sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority. I even went to a sewer authority meeting. Didn't work. They have their own separate board. So I would suggest that if you are interested in that, that you go to the sewer authority board meeting with all due respect well, I, and I ask could do, them. It, it doesn't I could matter do what I, we what do. What I'm asking is the citizen of the city to my council to send a letter just supporting and asking them if they would kindly expedite what they're doing on behalf of the citizens of the Scranton. I just ask if you would support that motion. No, I won't because it's already been done. We, we'd be doing double work. We could send okay, a thousand so in letters. Other words, in the other sewer words, authority, listen, the sewer no, authority Mr. board Guy, is a separate me, entity, Mr. Bullis. I understand Bullis. that. You understand what you're that. telling me, you did support a letter requesting that Mulligan we pay the voted, money back. We voted five to zero. Okay, so you were part of it. That's all I wanted to know. Yes, thank you. and I, you might have even it's been, been in the audience. It's been answered. Okay, thank you. You went after Mulligan like I asked. we asked you to do. Thank you. When you worked with uh, OECD under the Doherty administration, 
And this is just for each and every one of your members here to share the education that you learned from being on OECD that maybe we wouldn't have the issues with the SOAR Authority deal. The parking garage, we spent over $5 million with uh, Basiliga, yet we didn't get nothing for it. The taxpayers don't have parking spaces. Yeah, you could get a ticket if you park there, but that's what $5 million didn't do for us. We were to have our meter, our spaces, and we didn't get that for $5 million. Vasiliga got the benefit, he bought the mall, and we paid for it. And we give them now all the other nonsense. What I'm asking is, one of you guys, anyone, there's five, make a motion tonight to push for a reassessment of the mall at its fair market value, which is probably in the 25 to $35 million range. And we receive taxes on that, helps pull this city out of the hole it's in. It should be there, or you send a letter to the school board asking them to go ahead and do something. Now, on Wednesday, a Benghazi survivor, John Tegan, is going to be here on the square in front of the courthouse at 12 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, I've asked them to come here and speak. He's going to speak truthfully and honestly what Hillary Clinton didn't do and Obama didn't do regarding Benghazi. He survived there. He was part of the radio communications. It's not fake news, and I think it would be prudent for each and every one of you possibly to attend or one and then bring the information back to your fellow councilmen. Scrant is kind of in the light all over the world. We did it with our trailers, but candidates all come here because of who we are and what goes on in this city. And Thank I you, think Mr. that uh, when we turn around and see the experience and the real knowledge, we'll understand how administrations worked and the lies that we received and how our veterans are treated today. And as far as illegal immigration goes, I'm fully in support of keeping them on the other side of the wall come here illegally, we're a country of laws. This is our country, Mr. if they Bowles, want, your, your I understand that. <laughs> if I may, one moment, no, Mr. I, Morgan. I agree with you, what you're saying, but, but I know, gave you an extra minute, but. I give me, and I need to go to another meeting, that's where I'm headed. With the illegal immigration affects this city and this country, you wanna come here, come here illegally. I don't care if you separate from your kids what you do. This is our country. We took it back fighting the Germans, the Japanese, and we had a civil war Th here. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. Okay, let them go fight the issues in their own country. Either vote the people out M Mr. Bowles, or take your time their country is up. back. Let's stand up for America for a change. Thank, thank you. you. Ron Elman. Sorry, I, I don't know where I, I thought it was after someone else. Well, where is he tonight? This big bag of hot air that uh, claims to be an attorney and got in the middle of our sewer authority mismanaged mess. Henry Hermoso has no license whatsoever to practice in the state of Pennsylvania, period. What are you going to do? It's, it's got to come out in Harrisburg that this whole deal wasn't handled properly if he had one little inkling bit of it. And he had a couple hundred thousand dollars he got for uh, whatever he did. I don't know. I wish he'd been here to confront me. And just a quick, how come we have to hire a budget director when Mr. Bazzoni's job is to, is, he's supposed to be qualified to deal with uh, all these little towns and 
It, it doesn't make sense why he can't do his own job. Is he so incompetent? He, can, he has to have some uh, budget director. He doesn't do nothing else, but that's supposed to be his job. I don't know. I think he's just totally incompetent for anything with the city, and I think that's why he's not back at the bank. That's my humble opinion. And also, may I add that I think council is no more than just an extension of the Cartwright administration and, and their agenda. You, you just don't help the people of this city none. It's, just, it's, it's, getting, it's getting bad. What we urgently need here, we need a Marge up there and a Joan and a Marie and, and some of these gentlemen that speak. You, you people just don't have any concern for the people of this city, and you show your indifference at meeting after meeting. That's just my opinion. Now, quickly, I, I'd like to know how, why nothing's being done about Jefferson and all this property he doesn't pay taxes on. It, how could he legally get $2 million from the state on a piece of property that's been in foreclosure for years, years, not just one year. And besides that, that's supposed to be matched. Who's supposed to match it? Us? You're gonna drag another $2 million out of these people here and the people out there watching for this guy that doesn't pay taxes along with all the other people around here not paying taxes? These people are all hiding behind this LLC. You can't even pay your rent sometimes because ownership is so well hidden from people. Everybody that wants to use an LLC ought to have their name next to it and, and so you can find out if they're the least bit interested in paying taxes the next couple years. And Mr. Lockwood, I'm not mad at you, but I had four people tell me they could have cared less about all that stuff about the parking authority in the paper. People want to hear what's going on in here, what these people are talking about with council and all. They didn't, they're not interested in such drab stuff like that. There, there wasn't nothing that went on between Marie or anybody else in the paper. We all know all you people care about downtown anyway. I, I don't see how Mr. Foley didn't know. I don't think he wanted to know about the taxes. I heard this a year ago, like I, I said, I thought it was something that Mr. Bazzoni had, had promised the people. It, 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 it was on a computer for two years. Nobody in the city cared about it. That's why it wasn't mentioned. And quickly, to change the subject, every single week during the summer, there's all these garage sales, and they put up all these signs on telephone poles, and they don't take them down. Then in a day or two, they're blowing all over the street. I picked up two paper ones this morning, and they were both in front of my neighbor's house. But if you're gonna put up one, you ought to be able to, to take it down. Your name and number and everything's on there. Give them a little ticket or something if they don't want to take them down. It's better than having them blow all over the street. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allman. I apologize. I did skip Mr. Morgan on the list, so Mr. Morgan is up. Good evening, Council. Um, tonight, you know, I thought I'd talk about something that um, is happening in the city and, and in Lackawanna County in general that's, um, I think, ignored to a very large extent. And since we recently celebrated Father's Day, and there's 25 million children in this country without a, without a father, allegedly, that's the number that's being kicked around. 
I think it would be nice for there to be a study done <clears throat> and um, look at Lackawanna County's um, family court system and um, the implementation of laws, well, I'd, I'd have to say, not even implementation, but the, its conduct in regards to PFA cases and, um, and custody issues and support issues in Lackawanna County. I've just talked to so many men over the course of a couple decades who walked into the courtroom were completely marginalized by the court and the court really didn't want to hear anything they had to say. And the last person I talked to said, Lee, I was thrown out of my apartment. I lost all my possessions. It, all these possessions predate the relationship. And the judge wouldn't let me talk in the courtroom. So I, I really think there's time, a time and a need for there to be some investigation by the state, or I'd welcome uh, a meeting between the Court of Common Pleas, family court judges in total, the Women's Resource Center, their solicitor, um, and possibly a, a group of pro se litigators to sit down and take a look at the abuse that's taking place and also to include the district attorney to find out if the Women's Resource Center is still funding a prosecutor in the district attorney's office which would seem to lead to someone who's not impartial. And are we prosecuting innocent people and refusing to give them an opportunity to speak in court or having no consideration for their statements in court at all and just issuing verdicts that cause great harm to them personally, financially, remove them from their property, and I think, in many instances, break their bond with their father if the PFA is issued against a male who is the father of any children in these relationships. Because if anybody knows anything, they know that the minute a PFA is granted, custody is given to the petitioner. And it's just such a tipped thing. And I think it's time to bring the guardian ad litem in and have a discussion how she's protecting the interest of the child to protect their relationship with allegedly, in most instances, the father. And, and there's really problems with that. And so many times I've talked to men who just walked away from the whole situation. They say there's just no point in it. You're going to get a PFA, you can't see your kids, you're going to pay your support, and your relationship with your child is completely destroyed because you're standing in the family unit has just been destroyed by a court that doesn't care about its actions or the testimony offered. And if people understand the way the PFA laws are written, there's no proof necessary. It's the opinion of the judge. But if the judge doesn't hear both parties and if the judge isn't impartial, then where's equity in law and equal protection under the law? It doesn't exist. So what you have is discrimination based on gender from the district attorney's office right through to the Court of Common Pleas its judges on family court. And it's time for a real discussion in the community with these judges, with the district attorney's office, with the guardian at litem, and with the Women's Resource Center to get some grasp of the destruction that's taking place in instances where these PFAs are not warranted. Thank you. Thank you. Giovanni Piccolino. Good evening, City Council. I'm just going to read something briefly and then get to my point. <clears throat> Allentown City Council will introduce an ordinance this week decriminalizing small amounts of marijuana. The bill, which is modeled after a proposed ordinance in Bethlehem, would make it a summary offense rather than a misdemeanor to be caught with small amounts of cannabis defined as 30 grams or less. I mean, this is like a month or so ago. I think a county commissioner made some really uneducated I guess remarks about marijuana, I'm pretty sure it was Mr. Perry, Mr. Donahue, and Mr. Evans seemed pretty positive leaning towards it. Is this something you guys would consider doing, or is it something you guys could do? That, you know, we do have dispensary here, we have a grower, we have a cannabis festival, 
Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I was on the record, uh, like you said uh, last month, that you know I would be for any legislation, not any legislation, but within reason, that would uh, turn it into a summary offense based on the amount. Uh, something that was more in line with some of the other cities that are coming along in, in the United States, not just in Pennsylvania. Right, yeah, it's all over. So is that something you guys draft up the ordinance, or is that? Well, where, it, where does that start? It, it, it should come from the administration for our for our review. But uh, I've also got on the record to say that we, I at the, at the very least, want to have a discussion with members of the administration, stakeholders in the community, city council to have this discussion about. Is it something we should yeah, do? Yeah, this with wouldn't be something that I would like to take on alone as a body. This would be something like uh, Councilman Evans said, I would like the district attorney involved, the chief of police involved, uh, stakeholders, just to make sure that there was on the same page and we had as much input into the decision as possible. Right. Because these guys bring in a lot of money. They don't bring in a little bit, you know. I'm pretty sure the, they paid three or four times the amount for the building for the, the grower, so. You know, it could help the area tax-wise and so on. And so and you, yeah. Giovanni, you mentioned the medical, and I think all five of us up here were against what Commissioner Cummings said when she spoke out against medical marijuana. Um, as far as decriminalization goes, I think for me, that's a step too far. I, th I would really go by our judgment of our police chief. Um, but as far as medical marijuana goes, I, I think council unanimously supports that industry coming into into our city and it helps a lot of people. Right, but decriminalizing it doesn't make it legal, Pat. Right. Right. You know, it's we, on along the same lines as heroin now. I mean, you know, you have people probably in Lackawanna County prison over that. I mean, I don't know. Everybody has their own opinions about it, but decriminalizing doesn't make it legal. Right, it just and I think makes that's, it a lot less of an offense. It's good to start the conversation because I think that there's a lot, of, a lot of education that needs to be done on both sides of the issue. And I, I yeah. think that's I'd what assume if we're allowing a cannabis festival in the city that there's cannabis there. So, All right, gentlemen, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson, president, taxpayer, and so forth. Um, okay. Uh, our friends from the parking authority was here. I was glad on one thing to hear that they didn't plan on tearing two stories down out of the Linden Street parking. However, uh, I would hope that they'd someday plan on restoring that ramp. And uh, if they don't, uh, we need some kind of a speed notification in there for people that think they're at the uh, Grand Prix or something like zoom, zoom. It's awful hard not to get run over. Uh, and Giovanni uh, spurred my memory here. Uh, what about paving that lot on the corner, which I think the city owns, of 500? And Maybe you could put a couple meters in there. You know, you, sh you could have talked to them about that. That would be an excellent idea because it's standing empty. We don't need any more business buildings built in town, and we do need parking spaces that people can walk to before the pizza winds up on the sidewalk anyway. Um, once again, uh, the uh, lawsuits against the city um, how about if Mr. McGovern takes the state to court uh, over these uh, tax-exempt buildings? Government buildings are tax-exempt, and I'm sure Mr. Chellick up there in Mayfield just loves the fact that they're all in Scranton. My doctor's office is getting taken, two doctors in there. Uh, last year I had a uh, my problem with my car that I couldn't fix right away and uh, I had a would have had to hop on the bus at 8 eight ten to get to Allied by 11 o'clock because the bus doesn't run after Kaiser Oaks oh, shortly thereafter then I would have had to sit there till 1 something 1 30 maybe and catch it down to the transportation center and wait once again for the Oakmont bus. And that would have probably just about taken my day from 8 to 3.30 or 
four o'clock. So, I mean, that's great bus service. Uh, well, I just took a chance because the car was stalling on occasion and rode up there and had my blood pressure taken at 150 or something. <laughs> um, so we really need to do something with this tax exempt. And Mr. McGovern, you can help if you like to sue so, so many people. It, it would be, really be helpful because I didn't approve of the kind of abuse that we get in the Times, edit letters to the editor, or Mr. residents of Scranton. Um, uh, walking to school was mentioned, and the one thing I'd like to mention is that I was riding through Olive and Penn, the intersection, last winter, and I witnessed a pretty serious fight going on with high school students. So uh, maybe we could use a little police presence there, but that's a really crummy place to have to walk home from school. So, uh, okay, uh, we have some articles here. Uh, you know, on tax exempts, once again, we had a Reverend Gun Rights Limited, and basically what he volunteered me to do is to kneel on glass and say the rosary and pray if a couple of thugs kick in my door. You know, I, okay, you know, they're upper middle class people can afford all these fancy things and, and uh, fancy equipment for it and multiple magazines and they can go off to the, uh, the shooting range and bang off a hundred rounds in an hour and uh, you know that's that's just grand but uh, keep it away from your stupid kids because that's what it is. There was a shooting a couple of weeks ago down near Houston. They grabbed what they could out of the house, and it wasn't an assault-style rifle. So, and quite a few kids were hurt, and uh, uh, it's not right. Um, Benghazi was mentioned. Well, what about the $300 million sequestered from State Department security in 2011 by the Tea Partiers? So. One quickie here, Putin's our friend. He's building new nuclear weapons to enter duty that are ABM resistant by 2020. We have a real smart president. No wonder I don't like him. Have a good night. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Perry, any motions or comments? Uh, yeah, just quickly. Um, I wanted to ask Mr. Spindler while I was here, but he left about Dorothy Street. He had a question about that several times, about it not getting taken care of, and we didn't hear anything back about Dorothy Street, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll follow up on that to see if there's, has that been a more permanent fix that has taken to that. Um, Mr. Reed did run into uh, our Parks and Rec Director, which we had a couple questions. Uh, we're being promised an, an update on the treehouse shortly, which once we get, I'll gladly share with everybody. And also, I know that I've been kept busy with the pool. Uh, the, the, unfortunately, the pool that's not in service at North Marino Park in Westside, which is just, it's full of water, stagnant water, and it's starting to become a breeding ground for insects. And there's been a lot of requests to get that pool drained and uh, just, you know, to make the area just a lot better for everybody. And it was delayed, uh, but we did get an answer. Uh, thanks again to Mrs. Reed for, for getting that answer for us from uh, Mr. Fallon. Uh, the holdup on the drainage was they're waiting on uh, a treatment for the pool. Uh, so what's going to happen is uh, they're going to drain the pool and then wash the pool down with an anti-insect treatment. That way, even during the, the summer weather, if it does rain, there is some kind of stagnant water there, uh, it's not going to be a breeding ground for any further this summer. And also on a more positive note with that uh, park, uh, we have been in contact with uh, some of the people there and the designers. There will be some demolition starting uh, on the Novembrino Park. If you remember, we've we allocated uh, many many grants uh, for that park, uh, for the Splash Park, and that's going to start. We're going to start to actually start to see the fruits of our labor in the West Side, and we'll actually, you know, we'll turn that from a negative situation to a positive. And the kids are actually going to have somewhere to go and, and play in the summer months. Uh, Mr. Lockwood, I believe reading the backup, 110 cameras is what's going to be with. Uh, B5, and uh, I could talk more on that uh, during uh, during uh, the fifth order, 
Uh, but I will be speaking with Mr. Graziano this week, and uh, if you want to call me later this week, I might have some more answers on, on uh, the rollout of the program and uh, things of that nature. Uh, but as of that, that's all I have for you today. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Mr. Donahue, any motions or comments? Yes. Uh, just to touch on, we had Jim Hoover in our caucus tonight from Pennsylvania American Water, and uh, Mr. Dobson, you brought up a couple weeks ago the 200 and 300 blocks of Crown Avenue. More specifically, the, be the beginning of the 300 block of Crown Avenue. So I asked him about that, and there's a, there was a brand new valve that broke on it, so they made the cut to repair the valve, but by the end of this year, by the end of the summer, they're going to do a project up Orchard Street that's going to cross Crown Avenue, and when they do that, they're going to move in that 10 feet or 20 feet on Crown Avenue do the curb to curb. So they're just waiting to get that work done and then they're gonna repave the whole thing. Um, on Friday, <clears throat> I uh, attended the protest of Attorney General Jeff Sessions outside of Lackawanna College. Um, I was in complete awe, not only by the nearly 300 people in attendance, but also by their passion and determination to stand up for what they believe in. Um, the images of children who after being separated from their parents, and being warehoused in detention centers like they are animals in chain link cages is not only disturbing, it is utterly disgusting. This is not an America we can all be proud of. As, Cong as Congressman Joe Kennedy III stated over the weekend, humanity does not require citizenship. This policy is being shamelessly embraced by ideological extremists such as Congressman Lou Barletta, who wants the privilege of becoming a United States Senator from Pennsylvania. The Trump administration has used a wide variety of reasons to defend the policy, but the most disturbing was when Jeff Sessions cherry-picked cherry a, pa a passage from Romans 13 that states, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority to which God has established. This is the same passage that has been used throughout history by loyalist preachers during the Revolutionary, during the Revolutionary War in defense of the British crown, by Southern preachers in, in defense of slavery during, before and during the Civil War, to defend Nazism in World War II, and also apartheid in South Africa. We must, go we must ask ourselves if this is the side of history want we want to be on. If the answer is no, I encourage you to stand up and speak out against these fascist policies so each and every American can once again be proud of their country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Any motions or comments? Uh, brief comment. Uh, on many occasions, being civil to each other in a public forum while having a public discussion is no longer the norm but the exception, nationally, at the state level, and even at the local level. But I will say tonight's meeting was actually somewhat encouraging. However, it, it sometimes seems that we are no longer able to achieve civil discourse in our debates and discussions, and that can be a serious blow to the democratic process. I respect the public's right to speak their minds. I, in fact, I encourage it. But I also respect and follow the basic rules of civil discourse, to be respectful and don't make it personal. And by the way, it also helps to stick to the issues. In civil discourse, you use logic, use persuasion, use facts and information to make your point or defend your position. And in civil discourse, you will not attack someone personally. Yes, of course, you are entitled to your opinion, if someone disagrees with that opinion, they also should be entitled to be treated with respect. And the reality is that if you really truly believe and want to convince someone that your position or opinion is valid, you can achieve that through civil discourse. You'll never convince someone to side with your position by using derogatory terms, insults, and by ridiculing them. It just won't happen. And I think deep down most people know this. But if you don't practice the basic rules of civil discourse, then the only conclusion I can come up to is this, that you may not be interested in, or you may be more interested in insulting someone than convincing them that your position is really worthy of consideration. Over my time in council, I've debated my colleagues on many issues many times. In fact, just recently, Councilman Gunn and I had a spirited debate on the residency waiver issue. We disagreed with each other each other's position, and I think both made valid points to our arguments. At the end of the meeting, we shook hands and moved on to the next task. We debated the issue, not the person. 
That was civil discourse. We followed the basic rules. We were respectful and we didn't make it personal. Just some food for thought. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Gaughan. Any motions or comments? Yes, thank you. Um, just wanted to remind everyone that the city is participating in the county recycling program. Uh, all the details are on the city's website. Uh, they're holding them two days this year, July 13th and July 20th. Uh, so it'll be for uh, electronics recycling. There'll be no fee. You can drop off the uh, electronics at DPW 101 West Poplar Street from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. on both days. Also, the street sweeper uh, will be in the Manuka section of the city, Saginaw Street to Vite Pond Avenue, uh, this week, June 18th through June 22nd. Um, I did send uh, several emails to our city solicitor regarding uh, our shared services meeting, and I, I did run into her and, and let her know that we did want to meet with her regarding uh, sharing legal services between uh, the school district and the city, and I have not heard back from her yet. Uh, so, Mrs. Reed, if we can send uh, an official letter and uh, ask her please to respond so that we can set up a meeting as soon as possible. Um, one of the things that uh, was brought up tonight and uh, that I've heard over the past few weeks is the city's issue with uh, getting lifeguards uh, to man our pools throughout the city. And I was actually approached by a neighbor of mine who's the president of the North Scranton Neighborhood Watch, and uh, I don't believe they're, they're able to open Weston Park at this point for the, the uh, family fun day, which is upcoming because of the lack of lifeguards. So one of the ideas that I had was if the city in the future were to uh, create some kind of a grant program uh, to pay for the certification. Uh, because what's happening, in my opinion, is uh, young people want to be a lifeguard, they want to sign up for it, uh, but the registration uh, and the course fee could be a couple hundred dollars. Um, even the recertification fee, I think, is 150 to 200 dollars. So I think it would be in the city's best interest to set up in the future some kind of program where the city either pays for the certification for new lifeguards or they uh, partially pay for it. Um, I also think, and I'm not sure if the city does this at this point, but uh, I would set up a table similar uh, to how they do it at job fairs at Scranton High School, West Scranton High School, Marywood, Lackawanna College, University of Scranton, uh, letting people know, young people know that we are looking for lifeguards. I know they do a lot through the media, but uh, I think their presence in the high schools would also be good, especially if we can set up the, uh, the grant program uh, to help them pay for the certification fee. So uh, I will ask that we send a letter to the mayor's office and uh, see if uh, the administration would be interested in that. I did receive uh, quite a few citizens' requests over the past week, and I just want to apologize. I think Mr. Perry touched on this uh, two weeks ago. Something happened with the city email server. And uh, this weekend, as Mrs. Reed knows, because I flooded her email box with uh, forwarding requests, um, I had not been receiving emails for quite some time. And then this weekend, I received uh, a number of them. So I, I did not want people to think I was ignoring them. There was something wrong with the city's email server. Uh, we did receive a letter about 1428, 1430 Linden Street. Neighbors are concerned uh, that it's a serious safety and fire hazard. So if we could forward that to licensing and inspection. A uh, gentleman has been contacting me uh, twice now about dumping in the 1000 block of Hitchcock Court. Uh, there's several bags and debris that are littering the court. Uh, one is in the area behind 1027 Quincy Avenue, and the other is nearer to uh, 1009 Quincy Avenue. Uh, we did ask the DPW to pick uh, that debris up, and I would ask that we send a second request to them. Uh, more neighbors are calling and complaining. Also a complaint uh, that I received this weekend from several neighbors about a double home multi-dwelling on the corner of Geraldine Street and Schlager. Uh, they have called police several times for noise, fighting, uh, and the neighbors are concerned that the home is a sober house. So if we could forward that to the police department and licensing and inspection. Uh, also on Meadow Avenue, neighbors in that area are complaining of several potholes. Uh, I received a call about um, a catch basin that's blocked going over Interstate 81 onto River Street, uh, the bridge there. Uh, 809 811 Grandview Street uh, is being renovated at this point by an out of town landlord uh, who apparently is planning to put 12 college students there. Uh, neighbors contacted me who were concerned about uh, the potential impact on parking. Uh, so Mrs. Reed did uh, notify licensing and inspection and our zoning officer, so we'll wait to hear uh, back from them on that. Uh, also, high grass in the area of rear 107 Davis Street and some other issues with uh, a house back there. So if we could send that to licensing and inspections as well. 
And I was on the phone with a gentleman uh, yesterday um, about Cursed Court, which is right behind William Edwards Flores in uh, Manuka. Uh, apparently, there is a major issue with flooding. Um, the gentleman sent me a video and, and two pictures, and I forwarded those to Mrs. Reed, who sent those to DPW. Um, I'm hoping that this problem will be taken care of. The gentleman explained to me that uh, the water is flooding, has flooded into his in-ground pool, and he actually had to pay a couple thousand dollars to get a new liner. Um, so anything the city could do to alleviate that gentleman's problem would be greatly appreciated, and I'll follow up on that next week. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just following up on a couple items that were mentioned, um, I believe Councilman Donahue brought up our caucus that we had with PA American Water. Um, the water company has been very forthcoming with information um, regarding projects that they have going on, and obviously it's a nuisance anytime a utility is doing work in your neighborhood, um, but it's certainly something that does need to be done. Um, they are hoping to not run into the issues that were run into in the hill section where the water company and the gas company were doing work simultaneously um, in the same areas. And they were running into problems that, you know, one of them wanted to work in one area, they both wanted to be in one area at the same time. And what was a good idea in practice, which was to do both sewer, or I'm sorry, both water and gas lines at the same time, um, sounded like a good idea to get it done quickly, get the road paved and move on. Um, in practicality, it seems that it really didn't work. Um, you know, with especially if two utilities were working in the same area, it would almost shut down a street entirely. Um, so it caused quite a bit of issues. Um, but we are going to continue to keep lines of communication with the utility companies, the water and gas company open, um, as was mentioned numerous times. So the water company has been a little bit better to deal with than, than the, the gas company. We hope that they will um, send a representative as well. We'd love to meet with the gas utility contractors to try to get a handle on uh, those issues as well. Um, the only other comments I have are on agenda items, so that will be all. 5B for introduction of resolution authorizing the Chief of Police for the City of Scranton Police Department to execute and enter into a master services and purchasing agreement by and between Axon Enterprise Incorporated, a Delaware Corporation, and the Scranton Police Department setting forth the terms and conditions for the purchase, delivery, use, and support costs for the City of Scranton Police Department for their body camera project. This time we'll entertain a motion that item 5 be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Uh, yes, on the question. As I stated earlier, uh, this is to enter into agreement to roll out our GoPro body camera program. Last year we uh, allocated money through uh, the Justice Assistant Grant Program. Uh, which our police department is very vigilant and, and getting money for us to uh, upgrade and, and get tools for our police department. And this is just one of the latest grants coming to fruition. Yes, on the question, I just wanted to say that I, I also support this project uh, because number one, I think it protects the citizens and uh, most importantly, it protects the officers. As we've seen uh, over the last few years, the number of incidents that have gone on in the country uh, with police officers and individuals who say a police officer did something and they didn't actually do it, uh, these body cameras will help uh, keep everyone accountable. Um, and I think it's important to keep our, our police officers safe. Thank you. I concur with my colleagues and uh, about a year or two years ago there was a rash of incidents all throughout the country. Um, in a few cases the officers were in fault but in many more cases um, individuals made claims against police officers that may or may not have been true and there was no true way to tell if the officer was in, in the right or in the wrong and uh, in other areas of the country it caused it went as far as causing riots in some parts of the country. Um, so these body cameras will protect our police officers from being falsely accused and it will also protect um, the residents mm -hmm. if there is an incident where a police officer um, does something that's inappropriate. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction of resolution, appointment of Gerald J. Smurl, 300 Prospect Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority. Mr. Smurl will be replacing Kristen Jenkins, whose term expired March 1, 2016. Mr. Smurl's term is effective May 31, 2018, and will expire May 31, 2023. 
This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file with council number 21, 2018, an ordinance creating and establishing special city account number as noted, entitled LSA grants for the receipt of grant funds from the local share account funds through the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development in order to provide funding for various projects as grant funds are made available. I've heard reading by title of item 6A, what is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of the council number 22, 2018, an ordinance creating and establishing special city account number is noted entitled Stormwater for the receipt of funds from the sewer system escrowed sales proceeds specifically allocated for stormwater expenses. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6C, reading by title, file of the council number 23, 2018, an ordinance amending file of the council number 37 of 2016, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into concession arrangements with community development property Scranton Incorporated with respect to metered parking in the city of Scranton and the garages owned by the parking authority of the city of Scranton, Pennsylvania, pursuant to the Scranton metered parking system concession and services agreement and Scranton parking facilities system concession and lease agreement and to authorize certain actions and ancillary agreements contemplated by the metered system concession agreement, excuse me, to authorize the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into the second amendment to concession and lease agreement. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? I make a motion to amend item 6C per the following. On page three of the second amendment to concession and lease agreement in the now therefore clause section three C subsection III in the first sentence omit the words shall be released and insert is not to be released until Scranton City Council as a body concurs on an improved downtown residential monthly parking program as, whether, as well as further evaluation and recommendation of the proposed kiosk meter system, thereafter up to $1,804,000 shall be released. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second to amend item 6C on the question. Uh, on the question, uh, personally I think the importance of incentivizing the downtown residential community into the parking garages has several advantages. Uh, one is going to increase occupancy, which in, within the garage system in the evening and night hours when occupancy is at its lowest. Bringing in new monthly customers increases revenue and has a minimal impact on expenses. It also frees up on-street parking spaces in the evening hours for the customers of our many excellent restaurants and shops downtown. In my opinion, NDC has been quite honestly too slow to respond to my request to develop a plan for downtown residential parking. Many downtown developers have requested the same. Only after our public caucus last week did they finally press to exp expedite a study on this issue. This amendment simply puts some mild pressure on the garage operators to finally address this issue to the satisfaction of City Council, the residents downtown, and the developers of residential living downtown who have invested millions of dollars and will continue to invest millions more if we can get this right. Downtown residential development is one of the, our city's largest growth industries. So we cannot allow the momentum we have gained over the last five years or longer to be slowed by a lack of action and innovation in the parking <coughs> sector. That's all I have on the question. Um, I'd just like to follow up with um, one, one point that Councilman Evans didn't mention is by pushing more residential parkers into the garages, specifically at night, that frees up parking on our city streets for those who use um, downtown restaurants, bars, 
who come to visit the downtown. So it not only has a benefit to those who live in the downtown, but it also has a benefit to the business owners downtown and anyone from Scranton or outside of the city that wants to come into our city to park and uh, enjoy a lot of the restaurants and shops that we have in the city. Um, I do plan on talking to, I did talk to a couple developers, I do plan on talking to a few more of our downtown developers and business owners before the final uh, vote on this package um, to get some more input from them. But I do agree with the amendment um, to hold back some of these funds until we get a better handle on residential parking in our, in our downtown. Anyone else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I move that item 6C as amended, pass reading by title. Second. Sir. On the question? Uh, yes, on the question. Um, as I mentioned last week, I had several questions about this legislation uh, that I posed uh, regarding the electric city garage and uh, if and, and when any capital expenditures were going to be expended there. Um, and I also had several questions for NDC that I submitted. Um, so I would like those to be answered before uh, final passage next, next week. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A for consideration by the committee on public safety for adoption. File of the council number 19, 2018, authorizing maintaining of the existing no parking signs along the southerly side of River Street from South Washington Avenue to Mattis Avenue. Installation of R7-302 no parking symbol arrow sign, 276 feet west of Mattis Avenue. R7-302 no parking symbol arrow sign at 316 feet west of Mattis Avenue and R7-302 no parking symbol arrow sign at 356 feet west of Mattis Avenue. What is the re recommendation for the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As chair for the <coughs> Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gohan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B for consideration by the committee on community development for adoption file of the council number 20, 2018, amending file of the council number 118, 2017, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grants Program for the period beginning January 1, 2018, by amending the 2018 Action Plan to accept the $2,699,526 under the Community Development Block Grant Program, $560,864 under the Home Investment Partnership Program and $220,906 under the Emergency Solutions Grant Program. I make a motion to further amend item 7B by amending the 2018 action plan under the Community Development Block Grant Program per the following changes to reduce paving 2018 by $50,000 for a funding total of $601,671 and transfer $50,000 to the project McLean Park Improvement Project by increasing the funding amount to $150,000. Second. So motion and a second on the question? Yes, on the question. Uh, I make this amendment for several reasons. One, um, this park has not had any money put into it in nearly three decades. Uh, a few years ago, the North Scranton Neighborhood Association Watch uh, successfully lobbied the city for CDBG funding in the amount of $150,000. Phase one of that project is currently ongoing, um, and it's very successful at this point. This park is extremely important uh, to this neighborhood in North Scranton. Uh, the softball field is used every single night. Uh, this park before phase one was started uh, was in shambles, to say the least, equipment-wise. 
Uh, the fencing around the softball field is very dangerous. The field itself is dangerous and needs to be updated. The basketball court is dangerous. So right now in phase one, uh, it's going to be ADA accessible, um, and it's going to be uh, really a great park for all the children in this neighborhood. And one of the things about this neighborhood is there are a large number of children who live here and use this park. Uh, so I would ask my colleagues uh, to um, vote in favor of this amendment uh, so that we can continue to invest in this neighborhood, in all of our parks in the city, and in the children uh, of the city of Scranton. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, on the question, I think what's important also is we have the opportunity, I think, to move this project to completion instead of waiting another year and looking for additional funding down the road. So I think it's always important when we're close to finishing a project not to let it twist in the wind, not to get it halfway done, but to complete the project and then move on to the next project. So uh, I'll be voting yes on this as well. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7B as amended. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7B as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for Adoption, resolution number 46, 2018 ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development for an Economic Development and Community Development Initiatives Program grant in the amount of $125,000 for the Meadowbrook Creek Culvert Improvement Project. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Uh, Mr. Young was here last week and had a few questions, and uh, we did pose those questions to the administration, and the answer that we got was that uh, they would not respond to those questions because of the ongoing litigation uh, between Mr. Young uh, and the city of Scranton. I don't really understand, I mean, I, I can understand it a little bit, but I don't understand it in the sense that uh, we're just asking questions specifically about the legislation, um, and I don't think this really has anything to do with uh, the lawsuit. I think he was just, he just wanted to know whether or not this money was going to be specifically for the issues that uh, him and uh, Mr. Kennedy were facing. So, um, but anyways, I'm going to support this obviously and, and hope that this project gets started and, and gets completed before uh, the summer. Thank you. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption Resolution Number 47, 2018, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into this general agreement by and between the City of Scranton, Pennsylvania, through its Office of Economic and Community Development and the U.S. Department of the Interior, National Park Service, Steamtown National Historic Site, regarding the maintenance responsibilities for the improvements made to Renaissance Park and the responsibilities of NPS to operate and maintain Renaissance Park for public use and enjoyment and for the city to provide access to Renaissance Park through the plaza via the stairs, bridge, and elevator. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Community Development? As chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption Resolution Number 48, 2018, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into this general maintenance agreement by and between Renaissance at 500 Condominium Association and the City of Scranton, Pennsylvania through its Office of Economic and Community Development regarding the maintenance responsibilities for the improvements proposed to the plaza, as well as to authorize the city and association to operate and maintain the plaza for public use and enjoyment in cooperation with each other. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Community Development? As chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7E. Second. On the question, 
Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. 7F for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption Resolution Number 49, 2018, reappointment of Paul D. Antona, 333 North Sumner Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority, effective May 17, 2018. Mr. D'Antona's prior term expired on June 17, 2016 and was held over to May 17, 2018 and his new term will expire June 17, 2019. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7F. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption. Resolution number 50, 2018, reappointment of Emanuel Johnson, 1007 Scranton Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority, effective May 17, 2018. Mr. Johnson's prior term expired on December 31, 2017 and was held over to May 17, 2018 and his new term will expire December 31, 2022. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7G. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 7H for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption Resolution Number 51, 2018, reappointment of Michael Williams, 1505 Court Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18508, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority, effective May 17, 2018. Mr. Williams' prior term expired on December 31, 2017, and was held over to May 17, 2018, and his new term will expire December 31, 2022. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7H. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7H legally and lawfully adopted. 7I for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for Adoption Resolution Number 52, 2018, accepting a $500 donation from Kane Warehousing given to the City of Scranton Police Department Special Operations Group. What is the recommendation for the Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7I. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gauhan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7I legally and lawfully adopted. There is no further business. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned.